you will open your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 5, uh, I'm going to start with verse 7, read down through verse 16. Uh, I know Dustin's putting these sermons on the uh, internet, uh, and I'm just wondering because he says, he tells me how many people has looked at the internet, listened to the sermon, or at least went to the sermon, whether they listened to all of it or not. Uh, there's even people in different countries that have uh, listened to it. Uh, I bet they're one confused puppy trying to figure out where I'm going in chapter 5 because I, I've been down, uh, way down to where he talks about being filled with the Spirit. Uh, and uh, that's verse 17, and now I'm back up to verse 7, and uh, we'll probably be, I don't know where we'll be. We'll still be in chapter 5 sometime next week. But uh, anyway, uh, I want us this morning to really, really concentrate uh, on the things of Paul. I want us to try to get a mindset. Uh, the Holy Spirit has worked a lot with me today. I actually am a little nervous about preaching this sermon because when I, when I get touched the way I was touched this week, sometimes I make a flop out of the sermon because I'm not sure that God didn't just use it to, to mature me. Uh, but I want us to try to look at what Paul, why he said what he said. What was going on in the life of Paul? What was going on in the mind of Paul? Uh, when God said to him, sit down, I've got some things to tell you, and God spoke these things, not Paul, but Paul, God told Paul, I've got some things for the church at Ephesus that I need to put you with a pen and a scroll. You need to start writing. What was going on in the circumstances? You say, well, that wouldn't make any difference if God was the one speaking. I really believe that it does. I really believe that that Paul had some things going on and I think they would mean things to us today that they probably wouldn't if we didn't understand the circumstances and all the things that was going on in the life of Paul. So I want us to look at that very quickly. I've got a lot of scripture that I want to read to you this morning about Paul uh, and Galatians, Ephesians, uh, along in those uh, chapters today. But if you will stand in reverence to the reading of God's word, uh, Ephesians chapter 5. Let's start with verse 7, and we're going to read down through verse 16. I'm reading out the New American Standard this morning because it had some words that were actually translated from the New King James to where I don't have to translate them. I can look right here, and they're already there. Uh, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 7. Therefore do not be partakers with them, for you were formerly darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the light consists in all goodness and righteousness and truth, trying to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Do not participate in the unfruitful deeds of darkness, but instead even expose them. For it is disgraceful even to speak of the things which are done by them in secret. But all things become visible when they are exposed by the light. For everything that becomes visible is light. For this reason it says, Awake, sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Therefore be careful how you walk, not as unwise men, but as wise, making the most of your time, because the days are evil. Let us pray. Heavenly Fathers, we bow in your presence this morning. I come, Father, as humble as I know how this morning. Because, Father, you have spoke to me in so many different ways this week, Father. And, Father, I want to say thank you for the challenge that you've sent to me. Thank you for the love that you've shared with me. Uh, thank you for the grace that's been uh, a part of my life in ways that, that I've never saw before. And, and I just praise you for it, Father. And I ask you today, Father, just to take your word, Father, the power of your Holy Spirit, that is indwelling in your children today and let your word speak to them in a way that it spoke to me. And I'm not saying that they need to be spoke to in, in the exact same manner, but I pray that the word would change the lives of every one of your believers here today in the way that would conform them to the image of Jesus Christ. I pray if there's someone here today that just needs a word of encouragement, an extra measure of grace, I pray, Heavenly Father, that sitting on your throne today that you would provide that through the presence of your Holy Spirit in this service today. 
I pray if there's someone that don't know Jesus, that they're lost and undone without him, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you'll convict them, that you'll lead them to a saving knowledge of you before this service comes to an end. And I just pray that you'll honor your word, that you'll send it forth. I pray for the hearts, the minds, the ears of every individual that is here today. It's going to be Satan's job and his demons to distract us, to draw our attention away from the word of God, to think about other things. Holy Spirit, find a submissive people today and let your word go forth. Let it change our lives for the kingdom of our great Lord and Savior, Jehovah God. Thank you so much. In the precious name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. As we look at this uh, passage of scripture, I'm really going to try to run quickly down to verse 14 because that's where I want to spend a little bit of time. And verse 14 is actually uh, a quote from Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1. In fact, there's two or three scriptures that they throw out uh, that it could be, I think it was chapter 29, chapter 57, all of them in Isaiah that it could be a reference to, but I really feel like that it was probably chapter 60 and verse uh, 1 that he was referring back to. But I want to run through uh, verse 7 through 13 very, very quickly with you this morning. Uh, he said, therefore, do not be partakers with them. Now, he's talking about, and I want you to know who he's talking to this morning. And if you don't believe what I'm saying, go back to chapter 1. Because Paul started the letter out and he said, I'm talking to the saints at Ephesus. That's what Paul said. I'm writing to you. I'm talking to you, saying. So I want you to know this morning that God's talking to you as a child of God. Now what's he saying? He said, do not be partakers with them. What he's talking about, those that walk in darkness, those that are still in sin, don't be partakers with them. Now there's a lot of people that take that out of context and say we're not to associate with them, we're not to be around lost people, we're not to be anywhere around them. And they, you know, they go on and take other scripture to support that, that you don't need to have fellowship with that and you don't... I believe he is saying just what he said. Don't participate in the things of darkness. Don't participate in sin. But I want you to know we need to be a witness to those that are sinners and we don't need to isolate them out of the, in the world and say I can't come and talk to you and I can't be a part of your life and I can't share the gospel of Jesus with you and I can't be a friend to you because of the lifestyle that you're living. I don't believe you'll find that anywhere in the life of Jesus. What you will find is do not participate with the sin that they are doing because when you do it, you're sinning just like they do it. Now I'm going back to being filled with the Spirit because this all run through my mind this week. Why did be filled with the Spirit come in verse 17? Why did it not come before redeeming the time? And why did redeeming the time come after this passage of Scripture? And why did it all fall in sequence? Because I actually believe that there's a reason for it coming in the direction that it was. And I want to share just a little of that with you this morning. But he said, don't be partakers with them, for you were formerly in darkness. He said at one time, everybody listen up, at one time, Every one of you here was lost and doomed for hell. It don't matter what your mom and daddy was. It don't matter what denomination you were raised in. At one time, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is no one righteous, no, not one. That's what Paul said to the church at Rome and God told him to say that. So at one time you were in darkness. But I want to say this. If you call yourself a Christian this morning, listen up. I'm not deciding whether you are a Christian or whether you're not. I'm asking you if you say today that I'm a Christian, I'm a part of Copper Springs Church, I'm a part of this community, and I'm known as a Christian, listen up to what the Word of God is just about to say. He said, Do not be partakers with them, for you were formerly in darkness, but now you are light in the Lord, Jehovah God. You are light in Jehovah God. Now listen, he didn't stop there. He said, walk as children of light. 
I looked and I, there's five or six times that Paul uses the word walk in Ephesians. What does he mean? Too many times we take our modern day vocabulary and we say, well, I know what walking means. It means take a right foot and put it out. Take your left foot, take your right foot, and I'm walking. That has nothing to do with what Paul is talking about. It is your lifestyle that Paul is talking about. It's your conversation. It's your duties that you do. It's your complete lifestyle seven days a week 24 hours a day, that's what Paul is referring to when he said walk. Now what did he say to walk? He said walk as children of light. Now I want it, but I don't have time, but you can read it, it's in the book of Acts, I don't remember what chapter it is, but you'll find that the scripture says they were first called Christians uh, at Antioch wonder why they were called Christians back then. wonder why that name got labeled on them back in the book of Acts. I can tell you why. Because they acted like Jesus. That's why they got called Christians. I wonder today if we took a, a seven day period, 24 hours a day, 168 hours of your time and we flashed it on the screen, how many of those hours uh, would you say they looked They acted, they talked, they had the attitude of Jesus. I'd call them something similar to Jesus. See, that's what Paul is referring to here. He said, walk, let your lifestyle be like Jesus. And then he goes on to give you some measurements of seeing whether it really is or not. Because he said, for the fruit of the light consists in goodness, righteousness, and truth. He said there's some fruits. You go to the book of Galatians, the fifth chapter. He said there's some fruit of the Spirit. There's love, joy, peace, long-suffering. See, so many times we call ourselves Christians. Hey, I'm a Christian, but I don't have any fruits of that. Those two terms don't go together. Sorry, but if you're a Christian, there's going to be a fruit of Christianity. And if you're not a Christian and you don't have the fruit or you call yourself a Christian and you don't have the fruit, I do some self-examination because that's contrary to what the Word of God says. So what is Paul trying to get to here? He went on, he said, Do not participate in the unfruitful deeds of darkness. Did he say, don't be around sinners? He didn't say that. He said, don't participate in the fruits of the darkness, but instead expose them. It's disgraceful even to speak of the things which are done of them in secret, but all things become visible when they're exposed by the light, for everything that becomes visible is light. Okay, I want us to think about that for just a moment. I drive the school bus and I pull off of the parking lot at Guy Perkins School at 6.38 in the morning. So almost every morning when there's a sunrise, I get to see a sunrise. And I want to tell you something. It don't take a long time for when the sun comes up for the darkness to disappear. I mean, it's not like a 30-minute, 45-minute transition. In two or three minutes, the sun comes up, the darkness is gone. You know why that our world is so dark today? And we live in it comfortable because there's not enough light shining uh, to get rid of the darkness. And we're comfortable with the darkness. Uh, We've got used to the darkness. And remind me before I get done, I'm going to tell you a gross story that I hope you carry with you the rest of the week. But I want to tell you, Paul said... And I want you to look, and this was a quote back from the Old Testament in verse uh, 14. He said, Awake, sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Now, I read a lot of different commentaries, and I know some people said, Well, I don't read but one or two commentaries, and all that. I read everything. And if I feel the Holy Spirit said, There's something to get, get it. But about half of the commentaries that I read, according to them, Isaiah 
chapter 60 and verse 1, and this is not a direct quote. I mean, you'll, you'll find in Isaiah 61 that this is real close, but it's not verbatim. Some says that this is talking about the lost people before Jesus Christ comes. But as I look at it, it's talking to Zion, it's talking to the children of Israel, uh, and it's saying, a rake sleeper uh, arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. And I know for a fact that Jesus is writing to the saints, uh, and I want to ask you today, are you awake? Oh yeah, can you not see my eyes are open? I'm not talking about physically this morning. I'm talking about spiritually. Are you awake? Because Paul said, Awake sleeper, rise from the dead. See what the dead do is they lay there, they're motionless. They have no effort. They, commun- they do absolutely nothing. Are we awake? Are we alive? You may say, sure I am. Look at me, I'm breathing, I'm talking, I walked in here. I want to ask you, are you awake spiritually? Where are you at spiritually? Are you awake? You can say, well, I, I, I really don't understand what you're saying. Let's go on to the next verse. Verse 15 said, be careful how you walk making the most of your time because the days are evil. Let me take you back to Paul because I I told you that's where I wanted us to go and I want to stop right here and go back to Paul. Now Paul said a lot of stuff right here. He said don't go back and do the deeds of that darkness. Let's shine out his light. Let's arise. Let's awake. Let's move. I want to try to take you back to what's happening in Paul's time. Because this was written in the early 50s after Jesus had come to earth, probably 20, 25 years after Jesus had been crucified. That's when Paul wrote this. I want you to understand the circumstances there. Remember who Paul was before Paul's name was Paul and it was still Saul? Do you remember who Saul was? Saul was a persecutor of the church. Paul had actually killed Christian people for standing on the faith by grace through Jesus Christ. He had murdered them. He had drug them out of the churches. Uh, He had beat them. He had said, this is wrong. I'm a Jew. I'm under the law. I'm going to make sure you go by the law. Praise God. <laughs> Here takes old Paul. He's headed over to Damascus. I'm going to go whoop me some more Christians. I'm going to beat the tar out of them. I'm going to make them think about this law that they're breaking. Some of them are even saying we don't have to be circumcised anymore. I'll make them think you don't have to be circumcised anymore. Got hung up in the law, got hung up in the tradition, didn't realize all of the things that was going on there. And Paul said, I'll make them think about it. But Jesus got a hold of him on the way over there. He got converted. Now I want to tell you something. When Paul got converted, he got converted. It wasn't one of these walk up, shake the preacher's hand, say this prayer after me. Praise God, we've got a new saint of God here in the church. Uh, Let's baptize them, let's send them out. Praise God. Never see anything any different. But let me show you a little bit of Paul's conversion. If you will, look with me just one book back to your left is Galatians. I want to look at Galatians chapter 6 first of all and skip down to me with uh, skip down about verse 13. See, this is what Paul was dealing with. I wish we could wrap our minds around this because sometimes we get so hung up on the way things used to be. And I'm not saying the way things used to be is all wrong. I'm not saying that at all. But I'm telling you today, 
that the law had been replaced by Jesus Christ and grace. Paul endorsed that. But how did people know that? Look at this. Paul's talking to the church at Galatians now. Verse 13. He said, For those who are circumcised do not even keep the law themselves. For they desire to have you circumcised so that they may boast in your flesh. I got me one over here. I got him circumcised. Look at what I did. Boast in the flesh, but let's go on. But may it never be that I would boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. Now see, we don't understand this. Paul just said, let me read it again. Which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. What did the word crucified mean back then? It meant a horrible death, didn't it? There wasn't going to be any life after the crucifixion because they were going to leave you there till you died. Paul said, I died to the world and the world died to me. That's what conversion is all about, people. And we'll never be filled with the Spirit of God till we die to this stinking world that we're living in right here. But you know what? It takes a desire to do that. Paul said, I died to the world and the world died to me. I was crucified to the world. And I want you to realize that when Paul did that, he was taking his own life in his own hands because there was people uh, that were saying, you've got to be circumcised. There was people uh, that said, you can't eat this meat. There was people that said, you can't drink this. Uh, and Paul had preached that. Paul had beat people uh, for breaking those rules. And now Paul stepped in and said, I'm a foreigner to all of that stuff. I've got Jesus. Let's go and read the last part of this because I want you to get. And I don't know what your Bible may say. This is one of the reasons I've read out of the New American Standard this morning. Paul said, Circum it neither is circumcision anything nor uncircumcision, but a new creation. I want to tell you something today, church. Church membership. No, we don't do circumcision on the eighth day anymore, do we? I want to tell you something. You remember this, and I will not be held accountable for it if you want to blow it off this morning. But I want to tell you something. Church membership, yes, I believe the Bible teaches to be part of a local church. I believe that. But I'm going to tell you something. Church membership, non-church membership. My daddy was a good old boy. My daddy was a deacon. My daddy was this. My daddy was that. All of that kind of stuff is absolutely nothing in the eyes of God. You know what God's looking for today? He's looking for another Paul. He's looking for a new creation. A man that was walking toward Damascus and for some reason Jesus got a hold of him and he made a 180. And he said, what I was about to go over here and punish, I'm going to go support it because I found Jesus. Let's read just another, Galatians chapter 2. Stay right there in the same book, Galatians chapter 2. Look with me over at verse 20. Paul said, I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me, in the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. I have been crucified with Christ. Now I want you to look with me in Ephesians chapter 2 real quick. Ephesians chapter 2. Start with verse 4. I'm wanting you to see I'm wanting you to see there was a new creation in Paul. I want you to see there was a major change took place in Paul. And I want to tell you something. There are going to be a lot of major changes in a lot of people if you ever want to be filled with the Spirit of God. God's not looking for a bucket that's got holes in it or got garbage piled up in it. He's not looking for that for His Spirit. 
This is what he said, verse 4. God being rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us even when we were dead in our transgressions made us alive together with Christ. By grace you've been set, you have been saved. You raised up with him, seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now I want to ask you, is that, is that speaking of present tense or is that speaking of uh, past tense or is that speaking of future tense? When he said... Paul said, he's raised us up with him. He's seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. If you go on to read, he said, so that in the ages to come, he might show the surpassing riches of his grace. Paul said, right now, I'm seated in the heavenlies. Oh, church, if we could just get where we belong, if we could get our stolen identity back from Satan and realize who we are and who the king of our life is and who the Lord of our life is and live in a way that God could magnify then the world could see the darkness that it really lives in. I want us to turn over to one other passage. Colossians. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians and then Colossians chapter 3. I want to ask you and then I'm going to tell you a story to close. But I want to ask you, look at chapter 3, verse 1. The if there, sometimes in the Greek, it it's, could be actually translated since. Sometimes it can be translated conditional. I believe in chapter 3 it's conditional of Colossians. Therefore, if you have been raised up with Christ, keep seeking the things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on the things above, not on the things that are on the earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Is that not some pretty strong language? Maybe it didn't hit you like it did me, but he said, if. You have been raised up with Christ. Keep seeking the things where, that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. And you may say, well, I'm doing that. I'm here at church today. He goes on and says, set your mind on the things above, not on the things that are on the earth. Where's your mindset been this week? Where was your mindset this morning? I want you to think about that this morning because there was a radical change in Paul when Paul found Jesus. And we go down to knowing what the will of the God is, understanding the will of God. That's coming on a little later. I, I even preached on it a couple of weeks ago. It said walk wisely. It said be filled with the Spirit of God. Don't be drunk in excess. I want to tell you, a, and I, this guy's name is Jason Henderson. Never heard of him in my life. Read one of the most gross stories that I've read in a while. It's probably worse than gross, but I'm going to tell it to you this morning. And I want you to think about this for just, just a little while. Don't, don't get carried away with the terminology that I'm going to use because you may going to say there's no place for that in the pulpit. But I want you to envision your life as a Christian. And there's a cave that you enter in. And I'm going to say at the age of accountability. And you have to walk through that cave for the rest of your life. Some of you, Carnella, bless her heart, praise God, She's in a better place than we are today, but Carnella lived 18 years. She was taken out. Some of you here are past 80, so you're going to have a longer cave than Carnella had. But you get in that cave, and God sets you in that cave, and he says, I want you to walk until the end of that cave, which is going to be your death. There's going to be some places that you can stand up in that cave, there's going to be some places that you're going to have to get down on your knees and crawl. There's going to be some ledges that are going to be sticking out and there's going to be some places that's going to drop down way down low. You're going to 
you're going to have to be very, very careful as you go through that. You know why you're going to have to be very, very careful? See, that cave, except for the floor, has just been coated with baby poop. All the sides, all the top, every bit of it is covered with baby poop. So if you're not careful, what's going to happen? If you don't bow down when you need to bow down, you're going to have baby poop in your hair. If you run into the side of the wall, you're going to have baby poop. Any of you that's ever changed a diaper, do you know what that does? It stinks, don't it? I want you to ask yourself the question today as I'm walking through a cave and I'm trying to stay awake I'm trying to stay alert. I want to ask you today, how much stink are you carrying in your life? Because you've rubbed up against the walls of sin. And I just wrote down just a few things that you might say, that that don't even apply to me, really? Then why is our lights not shining everywhere today? I wrote down some for the Adults, and then some for the teenagers. Adults, when we go watch the movies, do we not rub up against the baby poop sometimes because we sit there and listen to the GD word? We hear the F word. We see the nudity. We see all of that stuff going on. But God, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Oh, I've got sin all over me I've rubbed up against it I've played with it I've toyed with it I stink like it but I want to be filled with the spirit of God right what about the TV the next thing maybe that we'll talk about is redeeming your time wonder what would happen if we just took one of the 30 minute programs or an hour program of the TV that we sit down in the comfortable recliner in the afternoon and say you know what God I'm going to turn that TV off and I'm going to read your word. You and I are going to communicate. I'm going to pray and I'm going to talk to you. Are we going to continue to rub up against the wall as we walk through life? And so I, I don't really see no harm in that. Well, probably the reason you don't see any harm in it is because you hadn't read what God's word says. And then he goes on to say, gossip. Oh, we love that gossip, don't we? The juicier it is, the better we like to repeat it. I know more about that than you do. I got more of that gossip than you do. I got deeper details than you do. Yeah, you're rubbing up against that stinking wall as we go through life. And then we wonder why the light of Jesus don't shine. Because we got stink all over us called sin. We've got anger. We've got unforgiveness. You did this to me, I'll never forgive you the longest day I live. Jesus said, if you can't forgive, I can't forgive you. Well, we rub up against that wall and we get the stinky all over us, don't we? But, oh, I want to be a light for Jesus. Young people, I want to shift to you for just a minute. It's easy to go out in the world. It's easy to do the things that the kids at school do. It's easy, I hear a lot of it on the buses of who gave up their virginity last week. Sex before marriage. But God, please, I want to be a saint for you. Ain't going to happen. Because you're rubbing up against the stink of sin. It's in your garment. God sees it. You say, well, I've never committed that sex before sin. And I know there's not a lot here today that's dating. But where's the foreplay started at? Where's it stopped? I can tell you where it's going to lead you to. A place that God's not pleased with. I can tell you where it's going. But that's rubbing up against that wall and getting stink. What about porno? It's real easy to find on the internets. 
It's a multi-billion dollar industry today. I guarantee you, you can slip it around mom and dad. Guarantee it. Is that part of your life? I could go on and on and on, but I want to uh, close. And we'll pick this up next week. Adults, teenagers alike. What are you doing with your time? Do you realize that time is a commodity that God gave every one of us and we're going to be accountable for it? Are we rubbing up the walls of the cave with the stink all over us? I'm going to do what I want to do. I've worked hard. I'm going to do what I want to do when I get home from work. As far as me visiting somebody, as far as me helping somebody, as far as me praying for somebody, as far as me calling somebody, it ain't going to happen, Brother Gary. Okay, that's between you and God. I can't change that. But I can tell you, you've got the baby poop wiped all over you. And I can tell you that until we get the garments cleaned, the filling of the Holy Spirit is not going to be there. So do we want to be filled with the Spirit of God? Awake, rise from the dead, let Jesus shine through us.